Hello, YouTube. Fallout here. Bungie dropped two brand new dev articles today uh, about the future of Destiny 2 going into 2025 and beyond. Actually, a couple updates for episode Revenant as well. Two articles back to back. I just read them live on Twitch. Chad is saying hi. And I'm just going to recap these articles. We don't need to do a... If I did the live read, it would be like 20, 30 minutes, right? But we're going to just do a recap. And if you're here with me in Twitch chat, thanks for being here. And give uh, your thoughts as we go. But first, a YouTube ad, because I got to pay the bills. Go. Even though it's September, it's still hot out, and I'm sweating like a son of a bitch. Fortunately, today's video is sponsored by Geology, so let's thank them real quick. Everybody wants to look their best, and nobody wants to deal with acne, oiliness, wrinkles, or puffy under eyes. You want to look fresh, like ZK Mushroom on a good day. Thankfully, Geology is here to help. It starts with a 60-second quiz. Tell them about your skin goals, then they will provide a derm-grade personalized routine and deliver it to your door. It's the people's proven skincare with over 10,000 five-star reviews. They'll help you create a simple and effective skincare routine personalized to you to get the results you want to see. Don't waste time sifting through endless products at the store. Geology has distilled skincare to its essentials with trusted dermatologist improved ingredients and they can help you look and feel your best. They've also got body washes, deodorant, face wash, and more, and they all smell fresh AF. Don't wait. Use my link in the pinned comment along with code FALLOUT70 and grab 70% off your personalized skincare trial set. Remember, there's also that 50% off on add-ons waiting for you. Again, use my link in the pinned comment with code FALLOUT70. Thank you, Geology. Okay. We back. So here we go. We have the two articles that have dropped today. One of them is about raids and dungeons. That's a really juicy one. We'll do that one second. But the uh, the first one is talking about making combat in the game kind of more challenging and more fresh. Uh, Bungie starts off by talking about the problem being that we've kind of milked the content in PvE so hard that when we know we're going in, we know where the enemy spawns are, you know, we know where to fight them. We know how to win. We're, we're pretty good at this point in the game, right? So they're trying to keep things fresh by adding a little variety and unpredictability to each playthrough. And they're going to do this a couple different ways. Uh, they're going to do a modifier system. And they want to do... They're doing these three different things. Banes, enemy modifiers and combat modifiers, and they go through what each one does differently. So a Bane is kind of a random effect given to an enemy that will make them act extremely dangerously, and they're showing how each one will work moving forward. So they're actually going to try one out in October with Episode 2 Revenant. They're going to test out the Bane system to see how it goes. They're going to start off with meteors and shock. And they give us a little video preview here. Show the video preview. Here we go. I'm hoping the volume is good. But yeah, there's the meteors. You can shoot them out of the air. And again, spawning from a random red bar knight. So we have uh, the meteor effect and the shock effect too. Both being tried out in October. So the meteor bane gives combatants the ability to launch solar projectiles that track but can be shot down. Shock will continuously build up a charge that will discharge on a single target within line of sight. And killing a unit with the Bane causes it to spread to others nearby. You can't hear it? Hmm. Well, maybe you don't need to hear it. Maybe I have desktop audio turned off. Nope, you should be able to hear it. Oh, well, nothing you can do. Anyway, so there's other Banes that they're working on in the future. They have uh, Berserk Bane. Here, I'll show you. It is not that aura. It's a different one here. The enemies kind of become enraged, and they just bum rush you. See all these dregs with the purple aura? That one seems less chaotic than the meteor and the shock one, but it does seem kind of interesting. Killing combatants with berserk causes other combats nearby to enrage. So you kill this first guy. I guess that first purple aura was important. Yeah, so this guy makes all his homies mad. Terrific. Javichi, happy birthday. And then we have Punchable. Punchable combatants immune to all range damage, and you have to run over and beat them down, you know? You have to run over and beat them down. So where is he? There he is. Immune to all range damage. You kind of see where they're going with this. And this Bane effect can happen on random enemies in 
activities. I, I, no set order to keep things unpredictable. This one looks really good. Nuclear. When a unit with a nuclear bane gets low health, it kind of begins a countdown. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> will blow up if not dealt with. So, yeah, that is fucking awesome. I really like that. I'm hoping that on extremely difficult content that will just murder you and your fire team straight up. Really love that idea. Uh, so that is Banes. And then we have Modifiers, where uh, Modifiers will change the base behavior of all enemies on an activity. Uh, so we don't have any video clips to show here from Bungie, but they did mention that they're going to be doing a throwback to some uh, some Scorn Baron trickery bullshit. But just to give you an idea what they're trying to do with modifiers there. Combat modifiers are about, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember. I just read this 10 minutes ago, but there's a lot of information today. Uh, we've been building to work, create new modifiers. Right, right. Okay, just extra combat modifiers. More info to come. Don't have any info on that now. But I too, Walker, love the nuclear bane. Sounds good. So some FAQ that they're they probably predicted we would ask. There is no Bane stuff on champions, which is probably a really good idea. It would probably be really dumb if you had to fight like an overload champion by punching it to death <laughs> if it had that Bane on it. Uh, Banes cannot stack. And again, remember, two Banes, Meteor, and Shock are dropping in Revenant, and then more will be coming later in Frontiers. Uh, they are not replacing all the old modifiers with new ones. They're trying to do a best of both worlds one. I am wondering though, that uh, I'm wondering when they say, you know, we want to take the best, that do they want to make the ones that we like using the most or the ones that are the most challenging? I don't know. But uh, we'll move on to the next article, which is talking about raids and dungeons going forward in Codename Frontiers and beyond. So here's what we have. Okay, there's going to be two raid races per year. I am getting a little bit ahead of myself, but um, they're kicking off every year with a new raid, starting with a new raid in Codename Apollo, which I believe is the first step into Frontiers in summer 2025. So we're getting a new raid, Codename Apollo, uh, which will, you know, all the stuff that you expect from a raid. And uh, they're trying to maybe mix things up a little bit because they have a big act to follow. They have a strong act to follow with the Salvation's Edge raid. So they might be hitting us with some, quote, unique twists. Not quite sure what that means, but they're obviously going to be tight-lipped AF about it because they don't want to talk about the raid because that's like their most juicy content. Uh, they're going to have raid feats starting with Codename Apollo. New raids will support a raid-specific form of challenge customization where you can turn on modifiers called feats. Uh, you have options like time trials, which I think is probably just got to go fast. Uh, contest combatants or other mode modifiers unique to the raid. And then the more feats you have turned on, the better the chance you have to earn high-tier rewards. And uh, we do love raids, Iron. And contest combatants to me sounds like they're going to finally give us something we've been asking for for a really long time which is the option to flip a switch and boom we are now doing the raid on a contest mode difficulty aka the level of difficulty that the raid is in the first 24 hours that it drops contest mode which the community has been asking for a very 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 long time and if that's what that is i'm kind of sure it I mean it reads that way and if they're doing that a goddamn plus I subbed show feet show feet uh raid challenge update in the first major update following codename Apollo the raid will receive a challenge update adding new rewards new mechanics new feats and potentially new encounters this is what I was talking about earlier with how they're going to be doing a second raid race per year on the same raid so think of it this way. When the new raid comes out, Codename Apollo, summer 2025, that's going to be your traditional raid race. So it's kind of like which team can figure out the mechanics and do it first, blind, yada, yada, yada. The traditional raid race. But then later in the year, 
uh, they're going to do an, another raid race event, same raid, but they're going to kind of beef it up a little bit. You know, new mechanics, new feats, uh, potentially new encounters. Second raid race, and it's kind of like this is what team can beat the juiced up, beefed up raid challenge first, which I think is kind of a cool idea. I don't know about y'all. I, I kind of dig that. Uh, so I think it's a good call. Uh, raid race time is one of my favorite times of year, even though it can cause a uh, blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> so I like that. Anyway, moving on new dungeons, of course, got to have new dungeons. Big, big deal. Uh, in Codename Behemoth, the second expansion of the year will include a brand new dungeon. So because the dungeon will be launching as part of the Codename Behemoth expansion, there will no longer be a separate dungeon key. This is really big. Uh, I know people in the past have been complaining about dungeon keys being a pain in the ass. I think that no dungeon key is a huge dub. I think all of this stuff, I mean, someone in the chat mentioned earlier, this is kind of very ambitious for Bungie. There's a lot that they're promising that they're going to deliver on. I really hope that they deliver. I think this is making me feel good about the future of the franchise, but there's a lot riding here. <laughs> but so far, I'm enjoying what I'm reading. Two raid races per year, contest mode modifier switch, Bunch of interesting stuff. No dungeon key. I, I like it so far. I like it. Uh, additionally, the reward offering for new dungeons will be expanded to include full weapon and armor sets on par with raids. It's all a golf clap from me. Uh, we got the new raid event. New rad event. Uh, so they're talking about what a great success that Pantheon was. I don't know about y'all at home. I loved Pantheon. A fantastic event. Challenging Got a lot of players kind of into the world of raids, even though I think it was made for people to have an extra end game challenge. It did get a lot of people interested in raids who had never done it before. But Bungie mentions that in the fourth major update of the year, we are planning for another event that introduces novelty and allows our team to experiment with legacy raid and dungeon offerings to create surprising aspirational challenges. So they're in the early design stages of the events. They have time because again, like late 2025, right? So if they make anything close to how good I think Pantheon was, great call. I think make Pantheon last a little bit longer because in the past, Pantheon was fantastic. I think it was too short. But yeah, Bungie has to be ambitious at this point. I kind of agree, but I, this is all looking good so far. And then we got raids and dungeons in the core game. So they're talking about how dungeon content will be in the new portal, which if you don't Remember, Bungie talked about that in a previous dev article earlier in uh, September. It's kind of like the portal is sort of like the new UI. And uh, they're trying to make it more of a streamlined experience with better rewards. If that makes sense. But yeah, it will be folded into the new portal that they're working on. You can read the portal article there. And uh, several updated dungeons will be available to launch and play with full challenge customization. Uh, very cool. Raid content will not be initially, keyword initially, part of the portal categories, but they are exploring ways to incorporate it in a future release. So, yeah, dude. A uh, lot of new information today. I think that Bungie is being pretty ambitious with what they have here, and I hope they can deliver on it. I'm, I don't know, I, you know, I believe in the dream. Hey, y'all, just kidding about the video being over. I uh, had more time to think while editing. Editor is currently on vacation. So I wanted to give some additional insight and thoughts that I had while editing today's video. Uh, you know, when you're reading new articles and stuff, woo, hype train. Uh, excited about all the new stuff and hearing from Bungie and the future of the franchise. And here's the new stuff we're getting. All that good stuff. Uh, good thought to have to kind of let the information marinate a little bit. So here's some additional thoughts and, you know, just thinking about the dev articles that we got today. And I definitely want to talk about one thing that I didn't when the stream was live that I know is definitely going to pop up in the comment section and going to be discussed probably between now and D2 Frontiers launching. 
and that is going to be how does it feel knowing that we're getting less raids per year which is basically what we're getting we're getting fewer raids per year with this new model that bungie is trying out with d2 frontiers beginning next year are they trying to do are they trying to stretch less content further and longer you definitely could view it that way um getting one new raid per year in many new in many ways is a feels bad uh i really do enjoy looking back on the glory days of when d2 was at the peak of its popularity getting multiple new raids per year great feeling a lot of stressful nights and days but uh but a great feeling nonetheless so now we're getting less we're getting basically one new raid per year and then the second raid race will be kind of you know a beefed up modified version of that already existing raid to be completely honest i'm still excited about the prospect of the new raid race being kind of like uh okay you know the raid but we're putting some spicy twists on it i still like that idea Definitely am bummed about the less raid content per year, though. This is one of those situations where it's kind of like, okay, I think we're trying to make the best of a shitty situation. If I'm being completely honest, we all know it is no secret that the gaming industry has taken a massive pounding over the last few years. Bungie especially. We've had two different waves of huge layoffs. Hundreds of Bungie employees gone. They are definitely trying to keep the ip on the train tracks moving forward uh with less staff than bungie has had in a while is that an excuse no is it definitely what is going on absolutely uh so i'm hoping i'm really hoping this could be a fool's hope i guess we'll find out knock on wood really hoping that if the content is done right if the new raid that we get per year the one new raid we get per year is just an absolute banger uh, the new dungeons a banger if they do the raid race the right way the second one where it really feels like new and fresh if they put enough twists on it especially that part in the article that, where they said there may be additional encounters i think if, the, if done the right way i think it is a dub although there is that nagging voice in the back of my head saying less content uh, less content stretched more thinly. I understand the concerns. Uh, I guess we're just going to have to see what happens. Uh, the community, as always, will give feedback. We will vote with our feet, vote with our wallet, so to say. And uh, if the new content lands, if the new Dungeons of Banger, if the Pantheon update at the end of the year is sick and awesome, and it hit, if it hits every note that we want it to hit, I could definitely see myself being content uh, with the early frontier model of raids and dungeons. However, if I'm feeling like that hole in my heart, uh, you know, that sense of longing, like we want more content, uh, you know, the one new raid, it's just not cutting it. I could totally see myself potentially feeling that way. I, again, I'm just going to have to wait and see. I don't want to be the guy who runs around right now saying that the sky is falling. I definitely want to be aware of potential hangups, potential criticisms about the content, maybe not landing the way that the community wants it to land. I don't want to turn a blind eye. That is for sure. But I definitely don't also want to be the guy crying about how the sky is falling before we're even there yet. But I think it's good to be aware. So I guess we'll see what happens. I'm really hoping fingers crossed. Again, could be a fool's hope that the new content will be banger in the Frontier model in 2025. Here's hoping that uh, the Frontier's model and the new content that we're getting actually does well. That Bungie can hopefully rebuild uh, to a point where, you know, more staff, they're feeling more confident and less worried about layoffs in the industry. Maybe they begin to thrive a little more, and maybe if things build to a good place in the community, maybe we will reach a point where we'll get more raid content per year. Again, I'm sure that is probably a very lofty goal considering the state of Bungie right now. But hey, a guy can dream. But anyway, uh, there's already a lot of community discourse regarding the new information today. 
about the uh you know the new model of raids and dungeons moving forward so let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comment section i do want to hear from you thank you very much for watching peace